Bonjour. Je m'appelle Jackie Judas, je suis ornithologue. Hi. Je suis responsable du My name is Jackie Judas. I have been the field biologist in charge of the Hubara Bustard Reintroduction Program in Mahasada Said for three years. Today is the 14th of May 2001. We're in Mahasada Said. The Hubara Bustard breeding season is going very well this year. To date, we have recorded 51 clutches with a total of 120 eggs. 35 out of the 37 females that we're able to monitor by radio tracking attempted to breed. That's 92 percent. Since 1990, when the first birds were released in Mahasset, and since 1995, when the first breeding was recorded, it has been the best year for numbers of nests and eggs. It is undoubtedly the best breeding season for Hubara that we have ever recorded in Mahasad. There are two main reasons for this. Firstly, the increasing number of birds in the reserve, and secondly, the good weather conditions. Following two years of severe drought in Mahasad, we received significant rainfall in November and at the beginning of April. Vegetation made a strong recovery almost immediately. Since December, we have been able to see green acacias and patches of green grass nearly everywhere in the reserve. Many plants have flowered and, in relation to the vegetation recovery, many insects have reappeared. All these plants and insects provide good food for all the animals living in the reserve. It is the renewal of life in the desert. Mahasset is wearing a new look. At the beginning of April, the whole reserve was completely flooded. It was like a big lake. It rained more in two days than in the whole of the two previous years. There are still several remnant pools that will provide water for animals possibly until the middle of summer. Obara don't use these pools. They take their water from the plants and insects they eat. To date, there are still four females sitting on eggs. In most cases, females lay two or three eggs per clutch, but we have found six nests with only one egg. In all of these cases, the females were young, and this was their first breeding season. They are inexperienced breeders. In one case, we found a nest with four eggs. This is quite a rare occurrence. Females generally lay their eggs in a small depression in the ground, close to an isolated grass clump and not far from thicker vegetation cover where she can go to hide or feed. Sometimes nests are found in open gravel areas like this one, which is also very close to the external fence. We found the first nest in the middle of February. The female is seven years old. There were two peaks of laying this year. The first one, mainly older, experienced females, was in the second half of February. The second peak occurred in the first half of April, following the heavy rainfall. Most of the young females, two to three years old, started to breed at this time. As the incubation period is 22 days, most clutches have already hatched. Females have not all had the same breeding success. Within the same clutch, eggs can have very different fates. For example, in the clutch of four eggs, one egg failed to hatch and was probably infertile. The remaining three all hatched successfully, but one chick was observed to be weak. We don't normally intervene with individual chicks, but in this case, we offered water. It's unlikely that he will survive. Normally, we try to limit the maximum intervention on the poussins. Here, in this case, 
voyant que le, le poussin était très faible, on a essayé de le réhydrater en lui donnant un peu d'eau. Mais bon, il y a toutes les chances qu'il qu ne s'en sortira pas. We have recorded several failures due to predation by ravens, foxes and cats. Other clutches, mainly from young females, were infertile. Globally, predation rates have not been very high this year. Seven cases out of 51 clutches, around 14%. When females lose their eggs to predation early enough in the season, they often relay. Two young females have laid inside the pre-release enclosure, the four square kilometer fenced area inside Mahasset, into which all new captive bred hubara are released. This area is free of predators, and fox and cat traps are regularly in use in the surrounding area. So predator density in this area is generally lower than elsewhere in the reserve. One of these females had already lost two clutches of eggs to predation outside the enclosure before she laid the third clutch inside the pre-release enclosure. Maybe she's learned that this area is generally quieter. There are currently more than 20 chicks alive. It's always difficult to know exactly if a female still has her chicks and how many there are. Generally, when a female has chicks, she exhibits characteristic behavior, indicating the presence of the chicks. In the face of danger, the female stimulates the chicks to hide and freeze. Generally, they hide under vegetation cover, but sometimes the chick just freezes in an open area. The female then attracts the attention of the potential predator to herself and draws them away from the chicks. When the ground is covered by sand, it's sometimes possible to find chicks by following their tracks. Jean-Baptiste, who has been the field assistant in Mahasset for the last three months, was able to find the chicks of the female that nested in the pre-release enclosure like this. Chicks exhibit cryptic behavior and with her cryptic feather patterns, she creates a wonderful camouflage for herself and is extremely difficult to see. Jean-Baptiste caught one of these chicks to see if it was big enough to put a ring on. In general, we check regularly to see if the chicks are still alive, how they are developing, and if they're big enough to ring. Chicks begin to run behind their mother when they're two days old. They don't stay in the nest for long. Although it was too small to ring, it was very agile and could easily run through the fence to rejoin its mother. For the purpose of Hubara population monitoring in Mahasset, it's very important to record information on as many individuals as possible. Wild-born birds have no identification marks, so we try to catch and ring them before they can fly properly. This colored ring will be used in the future to facilitate identification of chicks without radio transmitters that we come across by chance. The ring will indicate that the bird was hatched in Mahasset and in which year. We use a different colored ring for each year. We're using blue for the year 2001. Bashir, who has monitored Hubara bustards in Mahasset for many years, has acquired a good knowledge of their habits. Using radio tracking, it's easy for him to locate an individual female. As soon as the female is located, Bashir tries to observe the chicks. He has only a short window of opportunity to do this. The challenge is to take them by surprise, so that the female has not yet had a chance to hide the chicks. This is difficult because they can hear the approach of the car. Il faut repérer 
Bashir has to keep one eye on the chicks at all times, because as soon as he stops the car, he will have to jump out and run after the chicks in order to catch one. If we succeed in finding and catching them, and if the chicks are big enough, we fit them with a coloured ring. It's rare to succeed in catching more than one chick on each occasion. By the time you've caught one, the others have disappeared. During the capture, the female stays in the vicinity and calls her chick. During the handling and ringing, she stays at a distance to watch the proceedings. As soon as the ring is put on, the chick is released and quickly moves towards the mother. The female runs towards the chick, calling. The female has now retrieved the chick Bashir caught, she calls the second chick and the whole family move away to regain their freedom. This year we will try to accurately assess chick survival over a long period in order to acquire information on the length of time chicks stay with their mothers, when they start to be independent, and how they disperse. Such data does not exist for any wild population, yet it is crucial to the basic understanding of the population dynamics of the species. The only way to do this is to fit some of them with radio transmitters. Uh, I'm uh, in the location of 4381. 4381. See you. Jean-Baptiste has just found one young bird, and before he tries to catch it, he calls Bashir to bring the solar transmitter. Solar transmitters can't be carried in a car which is radio tracking because of the interference. The problem is that easily caught young birds have a limited carrying capacity. It's generally recognized that birds can comfortably carry a weight that doesn't exceed 5% of their body weight. At 30 days old, chicks begin to fly and weigh around 500 grams. They're still too small to carry a solar power transmitter that weighs around 40 grams. These are the transmitters we use with the adult birds. We have to proceed in two steps. First, we attach a small transmitter to the tail feathers. This small transmitter, weighing less than 10 grams, has a short range, several hundred meters, and a short life expectancy, less than two months. But they allow us to track the chicks until they are around two months old. 
and big enough to carry the heavier solar-powered transmitter. At that point, we remove the small, tail-mounted transmitter and fit the bird with the harnessed transmitter. At this stage, they weigh usually around 1,000 grams, and they are strong enough to carry the larger transmitter. As they get older and bigger, carrying the transmitter will become easier still. First thing after capture, Jean-Baptiste checks that the chick is big enough to carry the solar transmitter by taking its body weight. This bird is about two months old and weighs over a kilo. At this weight, he can carry the transmitter that will allow us to track the bird for many years. Yesterday I find this one and uh, I leave it. <laughs> you like it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. The small transmitter is removed and the big one is fitted. We adjust the harness to the back of the chick. Not too tight so as to allow further room for growth, but not so loose that it will come off or move. To date, four chicks have been fitted with solar radio transmitters. Of these, one is from a female without identification. It may be a female wild born from released parents in a previous year. Okay, we are checking the frequency of this transmitter to see if uh, there is no problem for the meter. This one is uh, before two eggs and two chicks I saw and after this one is disappeared. As soon as the bird is fitted with the harness, we take some measurements and release it. Initially, the weight of the transmitter unbalances the chick and it falls over. But within a few seconds, it finds its balance again and continues on its way. Well, 
on observe des, de plus en plus des oiseaux. At this time, mid-May, we are regularly tracking 74 hubara with working transmitters. But there are more and more sightings of birds without identifying rings. They are either wild-born or hubara with failed transmitters that we had classified as missing. From all observations, we can assess that the free-ranging population of hubara bustards in Mahasada Said is around 100 to 110 individuals. Compared to other wild populations, this is a high density. Information on chick survival is now crucial to assess how the Hobara busted population of Mahasata Said could evolve in the coming years. It will help to determine if more releases in the same area are needed. We are also currently researching the mating system of the Hobara bustard. Understanding of the species' ecology is very important in the management of wild populations and in the planning of further releases. But already it is becoming urgent to create new protected areas to release Hobara in the next few years in the vicinity of Mahasata Said. Sajja Um al Rinth, between Zalim and Afif, and the area further north, near Daria, would both be suitable. It is the only way to allow the Hobara population to spread over a wider area. Let's hope that efforts will converge to guarantee the survival of the Hobara bustard in Saudi Arabia.